ladies and gentlemen. One year ago tonight, through the facilities of your local national broadcasting company station, we were privileged to enjoy your attention at the premiere broadcast of a new series of authentic documented dramas entitled Dragnet. This evening, on the occasion of our first anniversary as weekly guests in your home, the cast, technicians, and producers of Dragnet wish to state publicly that our indebtedness is enormous. For the degree of success which Dragnet has achieved during the past year, our first and greatest obligation is to you, our weekly listeners, for your support, for your many kind letters of encouragement, criticism, and appraisal. If Dragnet is a proven success, then you have made it so. Behind the scenes, we have many more people to thank. Our engineers, our sound technicians, our cast. To the radio editors and columnists across the nation, also a sincere thank you for your judgment of our efforts. Additionally, claims on our thanks are held by the Los Angeles Police Department, for the National Broadcasting Company, and the Liggett and Myers Tobacco Company, makers of Fatima cigarettes. To all of these, and to you, our gratitude. Here at the starting point of Dragnet's second year of broadcasting, our wish is twofold. First, that we may enjoy your continued support. Secondly, that we may deserve that support. Thank you. The story you are about to hear is true. Only the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Fatima Cigarettes, best of all long cigarettes, brings you Dragnet. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned to robbery detail. Scores of lone women have been beaten and robbed. The victims have been unable to identify the criminals. Your job, get them. If you want a long cigarette, smoke the best of all long cigarettes. Smoke extra mild Fatima. Yes, Fatima is the king-size cigarette which contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos superbly blended to make it extra mild. To give Fatima a much different much better flavor and aroma than any other long cigarette. That's why Fatima has more than doubled its smokers coast to coast. Enjoy extra mild Fatima yourself. Best of all, long cigarettes. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Monday, July 1st. It was mild in Los Angeles. We are working the night watch out of robbery detail. My partner's Ben Romero. The boss is Ed Walker, captain of robbery. My name's Friday. It was 9.27 p.m. when I left the phone booth at the Sunset Drive-In and got to our car. 80K. Anything new? 80K, code 7. Oh, captain Walker's wife had her baby. Boy, 8 pounds. Oh, that's well. She all right? Yeah, so's the captain. Look at the uniform on the waitress coming. Yeah, they sure dress them up, don't they? Good evening. Hi, Daisy. Oh, hello. Didn't recognize you. What do you have, the usual? No, I think I'll have something else besides a hamburger this time. Here's the menu. Take your choice. Hey, thank you. Well, I'm kind of hungry. Maybe I'll take a meal. Mm-hmm. 42R, 816 West... Fried shrimp's good. Where's that? Mm, right there. Oh, yeah. 95 cents. What's all this stuff I've been reading in the paper? Huh? What's that? A couple of guys going around snatching purses and beating up women. Oh. Paper says it's happened seven times in the last two weeks. Roast beef, 90 cents. Roast beef's good, too. Don't you know who's been doing it? No, not yet. Well, what do you get with these liver and onions, Dave? Same as with everything else. Soup, potatoes, and coffee. 85 cents. Honk could just take the purse. Why do they have to beat up the women? We don't know. Well, there's headlines staring me in the face every time I open a paper. I'm getting afraid to walk home at night. 
Do you get coffee and dessert with the Salisbury steak? Yeah. 65 cents. 72 T. Roger on your call. Say, do you guys know what I've been talking about? Yeah, Daisy, we know. I'll take the Salisbury steak. Yeah, so will I. Hamburger specials on two. Well done on mine, please. Burn. Okay. Be a couple of minutes. Thanks. All units in the vicinity of 1016 North McCadden. That's us. Get it up. for PS and slugging. Mm. Code three. All units in the vicinity of 1016 North McCadden, 484 PS and slugging. Code 3. 61F, take the call. Okay. Better let her know we're going. Okay. No, we're leaving. We'll be back. Okay. You know, I've been wondering. What's that? Hamburger and Salisbury steak. What's the difference? Price. To the police officer, the lowest thief and most cowardly is the purse snatcher who preys on women. For more than a month, lone women throughout the western section of the city have been robbed and beaten. The descriptions were confused and varied because the attacks took place at night. 10.06 p.m. We got to the location on North McCadden where the woman was lying on the sidewalk. She'd been badly beaten about the face and neck and her jaw had been broken. Officers Reed and Shell of Unit 61F were already there. Any witnesses, officer? Yeah, this man in the sweater here saw it happen. Says the victim's name's Swanson. This is Mr. Kahn. How do you do? This is Sergeant Romero. My name's Friday. I wonder if we could talk to you, please. Yeah, certainly. Do you want to come into the house? Right over here will be all right. That officer there says that you saw it happen. Yeah, that's right. I was watching television. I heard this scream outside. I looked out and saw these two men beating her up. Can you describe them? Well, the light it wasn't real good. Right, They're about as tall as you two, but they had slighter bills. How old were they? Could you see that? Well, I'd say they were young, maybe 18, 19. Uh, I saw them knock her down. It was terrible. They hit her, and then they kicked her. Uh, they picked up the purse and, 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 and ran down that way. And you called the police? Uh, yes, but not right away. I, I ran out and, and saw them get in their car across the street. They drove right past me. Then they turned east there on, on Romaine. Can you describe the car for us? I got the license number for you. The last three numbers were 552. Just three numbers? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you describe the car? What kind was it? Oh, I don't know. It was new. I think it was black. Maybe a sedan. Well, was it a large car or a small one? Oh, kind of medium. Did you notice the back of it? Yeah, that's where I saw the license plate. No, I mean, did you notice anything about the car? Maybe a dent on the fender or a sticker on the window? No, I didn't look at the window. Did the car have a spotlight or a radio antenna? Well, I guess I didn't see any. I was trying to look at the license plates. Did you notice anything unusual about the car? Any, any identifying marks at all? No, no, I didn't notice. How about the make of the car? Did you see what kind of one? No, the last three numbers on the license plate were 552. California license plate? Uh, yes, it was. Now, that should be enough here. Do you think you'll catch them tonight? Do you know how many plates end in 552? While Ben called in a general description of the car and the two attackers, I talked to the other bystanders. I found out that the victim's name was Mrs. Frida K. Swanson, a widow. She had a room at 1003 North McCadden. None of the neighbors had seen the robbery or the beating take place. 11.28 p.m., Ben and I arrived at Hollywood Receiving Hospital to interview Mrs. Swanson, but she was unable to talk or to identify her attackers. She wrote on a piece of paper that she'd been slugged from behind. She never got a good look at the men. Besides a broken jaw, she was suffering from a fractured wrist, a broken nose, and bruises about the face and body. Tuesday, July 2nd, the getaway car used in the attack on the previous night was found abandoned on Hollywood Boulevard and proved to be a stolen car. License number 6 Young 4552. The victim's empty purse was found inside. Routine investigation developed no leads. We met with Captain Walker. Because the last four attacks had taken place within a six block radius, we set up a plan of decoys in an attempt to trap the two purse snatchers. Four police women from Juvenile Bureau and a special detail from Metropolitan Division were assigned. Tuesday, 4 p.m., a special detail was ordered to the squad room for briefing. Hello, Joe. Oh, hiya, Dorothy. How's your tuxedo back in mothballs? Yeah, how are your feet? My feet, nothing the matter with them. You're a good dancer. Yeah, I bet I could use some lessons. Oh, you don't need lessons, Joe. You need practice. Okay, let's get started. <clears throat> I don't have to tell you the risks involved in an operation like this. I want all of you to know where everybody will be at any given time. By all of you, I mean the police women and also the men who will be in the squad cars. If anybody misses anything, stop me. We don't have much of a description of the men we're after. 
There are two of them, both about 18 years old. Usually they wear sneakers, slacks, and sport coats. They've been in different kinds of cars, all of them stolen. They keep each car for a few days and ditch it. Uh, pull down the map, will you, Joe? Yes, sir. <clears throat> now, here's the area here. Residential, 90% of the dwellings have garages, so if a car is parked on the street, it might be unusual. Each of you will be given a list of cars stolen in the last 48 hours, still outstanding. I want you to check all parked cars against the hot sheet. Oh, uh, first hold up your purses, please. <coughs> Young lady, that purse is too small, I'm afraid. Let's make it look worthwhile. Yes, sir. All right. Of course, you won't be carrying your guns in your purse. You wear a shoulder holster. Before you leave, Sergeant Friday will pass out some marked bills I want you to carry. Okay, now, Policewoman Short. Yes, sir. You'll board a westbound streetcar at Western and Santa Monica Boulevard at, uh, at 9.03 p.m. Don't worry about these schedules. The streetcar will be there. Okay. You get off at Las Palmas at 9.13. Walk south to Willoughby. Turn east on Willoughby to Hudson and north one block to Romaine. You go west on Romaine to Coenga and then retrace your steps to the starting point and you're through. Got it? Yes. You'll be covered by Unit 81K. Captain. Yep. How fast or slow should we walk? Oh, I'd say a pretty good pace. No woman likes to be alone on the streets at night, so it'd be natural. Yes, sir. Policewoman Ball. Yes, sir. You'll board an eastbound bus at La Brea and Melrose at uh, 9.35 p.m. Okay. You get off at Wilcox and Melrose at 9.45. Walk north on Wilcox to Waring. Turn west on Waring for two blocks and north on Cherokee. Follow Cherokee for two blocks, turn east on Romaine. Mm. Follow Romaine to Cole, and turn north on Cole. When you get to Santa Monica Boulevard, retrace your steps to your starting point. You'll be covered by Unit 87K. Will the cars be cruising or will they be parked? Both. Friday and Romero will be cruising all the time. I'll get to the others when I finish with these instructions. Of course, if you see any police car, give no recognition. Yes, sir. Captain. Yeah? You said the two suspects wear sneakers? That's right. It'd be pretty hard to hear them come up behind you. I'd say so. Did any of the victims hear them? If they had, they wouldn't be victims. Nine p.m. The decoy plan went into effect. We waited. Tuesday night passed. Nothing happened. Wednesday night, nothing. Thursday, July 4th, the decoy plan was enlarged to include a larger area, but everything was quiet. Friday, July 5th. Captain Walker decided that the new plan covering an area from La Brea to Vine Street and from Sunset to Beverly would be kept in operation. 10.45 p.m., Ben and I cruised the exposed area. We've been thinking about moving to a new place. Yeah? Only trouble is we don't know what's going to happen. You mean if rent control goes off? Yeah. We don't know if rents will go up or down. He's got a lease on it. 71 Mars, next month. Bacon and Mariposa, 507 party. We don't know what to do. We even tossed a coin to decide. Well, that's about as good a way as any. The coin came up tails four times in a row. Yeah? Wife changed her mind on each toss. No decision. Roger, 71R. Got a policewoman down there? Yeah. Nancy Short. You got her out there? Uh, south on Hudson, east on Melrose, then up Wilcox to Sunset. All units, Willoughby and Hudson, 484 BS and slugging code 3. That's us. Let's roll on it. 83F, Willoughby and Hudson, 484 BS and slugging code 3. We drove to Willoughby and Hudson, just south of the corner, and saw a woman sitting on the grass with a few people around. She was a young woman, about 25. Her clothes had been torn, and there was a red welt on her right cheekbone. She was trying to get to her feet as we came up. There'll be an ambulance here in a few minutes, miss. Can you tell us how it happened? Cheek swelling. Did you see who attacked Yes, you? I did. I can tell you about them. Look, here, I ripped off one of their pockets. These cards fell off. Mm-hmm. Mm, driver's license. George Landon. Here's the piece of cloth I tore off his pocket. I'll take that, ma'am. Thank you. You want to stay with her? I'll see if I can get a make on this license. You're okay. Uh, would you give me your name, please? Barbara Curtis. I live over on Hudson. 80K to control one. 80K to control one. Go ahead, Eddie K. Check suspect for making warrants. George Landon, male, white, age 18, 5 feet 9 inches, 155 pounds, blue eyes, black hair. Address, 27, 22 and a half, Arthur Avenue, KMA 367. 
Roger, 80K. Mm. By a couple of young people. Did you see the car? Yes, I saw it. White sidewall tires. It was a club coupe. I tried to see the license plate. I couldn't make it out. What color was it called? I don't know. Dark green, I think. I'm so mad I could boil. Can you describe the man? Well, you got the driver's license. It's all there. Well, that's just for one of them, miss. You said there were two men. I don't know. I grabbed one of their coats and the other one hit me. Mm -hmm. The thing I'm so mad about is I tried to scream and nothing had come out. I understand. All right, hi. You're the 63F. We got the call. That's fine. This is the victim, Miss Curtis. If you'll handle the report and see that she gets home, we got a lead to check out here. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Don't you Control call back, Joe? Right, we better get it. Come on. Right with you. Okay, I'm listed. 80K to Control One. Go ahead. 80K. Suspect has misdemeanor and felony record. One arrest, suspicion of robbery, and one arrest, GTA. No wants at this time. Most recent address on suspect, 27, 22 and one half, Arthur Avenue. Roger. Been in trouble before. Felony and misdemeanor. Yeah. And the address matches. Maybe this cloth does. listening to Dragnet, the case history of a police investigation presented in the public interest by Fatima Cigarettes. If you smoke a long cigarette, it will be in your interest to listen to a typical case history of a Fatima smoker. It's the case of beautiful aviatrix Bab Beckwith, one of the few women who holds a commercial instructor's rating for single-engine land and sea aircraft. This is her actual signed statement. I've been smoking long cigarettes for quite some time. Recently, a friend told me about a really mild king-size cigarette, Fatima. I'm very glad I tried them. Fatimas are a lot milder than any of the others I've smoked and have a much better flavor. I agree. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. And so do more and more smokers every day. Actual figures show extra mild Fatima has more than doubled its smokers coast to coast. So enjoy extra mild Fatima yourself. The king-size cigarette, which contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos, superbly blended to make it extra mild. You will prefer Fatima's much different, much better flavor. You will agree. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. The best of all long cigarettes. <laughs> Friday, 11 p.m., Ben and I drove to 27, 22 and a half Arthur Avenue. It was a small house at the rear of a lot on the east end of town. Alongside the front house, there was a narrow passageway leading to the house in the back with a small lawn between the two. There was no alley, and anybody leaving from the front or back door had to go through the narrow passage. As we approached the house, a light was on in the front room, and through the window we could see a middle-aged woman reading a magazine. We rang the bell. Yes? Police officers. Does George Landon live here? Why, yes, he does. I'm his aunt, Miss Landon. What do you want? Can we come in? Why, yes. Thank you. Won't you sit down? Thank you, ma'am. Is George Landon at home now? No, he isn't, but I think he'll be home soon. He never stays out late. He isn't in any trouble, is he? Do you know where he is? With his friends, I suppose. He's a popular boy. He really should be home soon. Where has he been, Miss Lynn? I don't know. He goes out at night, you know, with his friends. Who are they? Well, I really don't know. You see, it's difficult to keep track of a young boy. Mm -hmm. He's a big boy, and he's full of vitality. He has to find things to do. Yes, ma'am. He lives here with me. I'm his aunt. I'm not married, so I take care of him. His parents died when he was a baby. I see. Does George work, or does he go to school? Oh, he's finished school. You aren't here about that automobile that was stolen a year ago, are you? No, ma'am. Oh, he had some trouble then, but I'm sure he didn't do it. Since then, he's been very good. He hasn't missed a day's work, and he goes to church with me any time I ask him. Where does he spend his evenings, do you know? Well, I told you, with his friends. A young man has to use up his energy. I don't try to hold him too tightly. Good boy like him. 
Can we look at his room? Oh, yes. yes it's right here. All right. I'll show you how neat he keeps it. Now, there. Isn't that nice? Yes, ma'am. I'm not trying to defend him. I'm only telling you about him. He keeps this room cleaned up himself. He smokes a little, but I've never smelled a drop of liquor on his breath. He's a very good boy. Yes, ma'am. He even reads a lot. You, you can see his books over here. Mm, yes, ma'am. You mind if we look around a little? No. No, that's all right. Should be home soon. He's probably at a movie. Do you want to wait for him? No, I won't be necessary. He's always home by midnight. I'll tell him you were here. Oh, that must be George now. George! Yeah? These men would like to talk to you. They're police officers. All right, take it easy, young fellow. Oh, let go. Hold him. Turn him around. Yep. <laughs> Stand still, young fellow. No, it's no gun. What do you guys think you're doing? I didn't do anything. I was just out for a ride. This your nephew? Yes. Coat's torn, Joe. Pocket ripped off. Is this your driver's license here, George? Yeah. I lost it. When? Last week. It was found tonight. So what? How'd you tear your coat? Getting out of the car the other night. Here's a piece of cloth. The girl who was attacked tonight gave it to us. It matches the tear there in your coat. What have you done, George? Tell her. I, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it any time. He talked me into it. Who talked you into he it? He made me do it. He's got a gun and he stole the cars. He made all the plans. Who made all the plans? Well, Tommy. Oh, we never did anything except hang out at the drugstore until that time a year ago. What's his last name? He said that it'll always be held against me and I better go along with him. Tommy who? Decker. Was he with you tonight? Yeah, he's the one that hit her when she grabbed hold of me. He's the one that always hit him. I never wanted him to do it. Mm -hmm. Where's the stuff you took out of that purse? Well, Tommy's going to hide it. Where? Back of where he works. Where's that? Oh, garage someplace. I don't know where. He just started working there. Where does he live? Place on West 6th. I've never been there. What does this Decker look like? Well, he's the same age I am, but about an inch taller and must be 15 pounds heavier. He's got dark hair. How's he dressed? Just like me. Sneakers and brown slacks and a tan sport coat. Better call the office, Ben. Yeah. Can I use your telephone, ma'am? Oh, it's in the hall behind the door. Thank you. You said Decker's got a gun? Yeah. Officer, will you tell me the truth? I'll try, ma'am. Are George and this Tommy Decker the two men the papers have been writing about? I'm afraid so. The ones who've been robbing the women? Yes, ma'am. And beating them up? Yeah. I didn't mean it. I didn't know what I was doing. I raised you, George. I didn't either. Eleven forty-two p.m. We checked into the office with the eighteen-year-old suspect, George Landon. While Ben and a police stenographer took down the statement, I went down to R and I and pulled the package on the other suspect, Thomas Decker. His mama sheet showed a petition had been filed on four fifty-nine P.C. and four eighty-eight P.C. They also showed three different recent addresses for Decker. One on West 6th Street, one on South Mariposa, and a third on North Catalina. Two units were dispatched to the first two addresses. Ben and I went to the address on North Catalina, a rooming house. We learned from Decker's landlady that he was working as an apprentice mechanic on the swing shift at a large garage on South Flower Street. 12.51 a.m., Ben and I arrived at the garage. I beg your pardon. Yes? Police officer, does Thomas Decker work here? Yeah, he works here. Hey, Decker! Hey, Decker! Yeah? I'm the guy here to see you. There he is back there. Thank you. What do you want? You Thomas Decker? Yeah? Police officers like to talk to you. Watch it, Joe. <gasps> Come on. Hey, he's going in the locker room. It's locked. Come on, hit it. Yeah. Oh. Hey, you! You over there! Any yeah. other way out of this locker room? Yeah, down the hall, in the end. Come on, Ben. All right. Here we are. Yeah. Watch it! Came from behind that car, back by the door. All right, cover me. All right, Ben, give it back to him. Don't shoot, don't. I give up! Throw your gun out! Throw it out! Here it is! Don't shoot! All right, now, come on out. Hands behind your head. I'll get the gun. 
All right, you turn around. Lousy. Come on. Watch it, Joe. Watch it. Please get in the way. Head him off downstairs. No. There he goes. All right, get the cuffs on him, Ben. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Eighteen years old. What's it prove? I don't know. Sometimes you kind of wonder if it's true. What's that? There's no such thing as a bad boy. The story you have just heard was true. Only the names have been changed to protect the innocent. On November 1st, trial was held in Superior Court, Department 82, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. It's amazing how many long cigarette smokers are changing to extra mild Fatima. Here is the actual report. From coast to coast, extra mild Fatima has more than doubled its smokers. Yes, more and more smokers every day are discovering that Fatima is the king-size cigarette that is extra mild. Extra mild because it contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos superbly blended to make it extra mild, to give it a much different, much better flavor and aroma. Enjoy extra mild Fatima yourself. Best of all long cigarettes. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. <laughs> Thomas Decker and George Landon were tried and convicted on five counts of grand theft person, five counts of grand theft auto, and five counts of assault with intent to do great bodily harm. They were sentenced to the state penitentiary for a term as prescribed by law and are now serving their sentence. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief of Police W.A. Wharton speaking from his office in City Hall, Los Angeles, California. As Chief of Police of the city of Los Angeles, I wish to extend my heartiest congratulations to the program Dragnet on the occasion of its first anniversary. The overwhelming success of this program, as indicated by the hundreds of commendatory letters, telegrams, and personal comments, I feel has been due to the splendid job of portraying police officers and their work. The American public, by its enthusiastic acceptance of Dragnet, has indicated a desire for factual police programs. The Los Angeles Police Department is proud to contribute to the constructive entertainment of both adults and children through this medium. May I extend my best wishes to the National Broadcasting Company, the sponsor, the actors, the writer, and the producer of Dragnet and I trust there will be many more years of continued success for this program. You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice for Dragnet comes from the office of Chief of Police W.A. Wharton, Los Angeles Police Department. Fatima Cigarettes, best of all long cigarettes, has brought you Dragnet, transcribed from Los Angeles. Next, a great new show, Sarah's Private Caper on NBC.